and I'm this Scott. is Geek Nights. Tonight, we're talking about a webcomic. We're talking about Katie Cook's Nothing Special. Got any sort of opening bit? I got oh, one. I just used it. I just used my oh, open SSH. Do that again. We'll talk about this. We should talk about SSH on Monday, maybe. God damn we it. We have. There's definitely yeah, been an SSH show. TLS. Let's talk about TLS. Probably, we probably did that, too. <laughs> what do you know about T- We could talk about certificate signing. Yeah. We've done SSH. I, I, I got an opening, but I don't yes. Know. Uh, all right. So you may remember uh, a while ago, right when the quarantine started, I mentioned uh, kind of just in the middle of a show, like, you know, I'm working on a project. I got this wood hurdy-gurdy kit. I'm going to make a hurdy-gurdy. Now we'll see how that goes. You finished, I finished your it a long time ago, and it worked. Like, oh, okay. Are you, are you so I did play it? it. I can make music come out of it. Are you annoying so everybody? So the cool thing is, there was someone posted a YouTube video where they made that kit, and it sounded like shit. But that video, literally, once I built it and actually investigated it, the only reason that one sounded like shit is that they did not at any point they did not tune it at all. They built it and then started cranking the stupid thing. Imagine if you just bought a random guitar like in a garage sale and tried to play on it without even touching all those little knoblies at the top. So mm-hmm. I tuned it, uh, and it sounded okay. Like it sounded as good as I would have expected it to sound. I could play some songs on it. I tuned the drone key string to a D. I tuned. Is it is is it succeed in annoying everyone? It's not around that you? loud. It basically could only annoy at most one person because we're in a quarantine. Well, that's what you're. Yeah, that was my goal. At, so. Uh, I was annoying with it for maybe two days, and then one of the strings snapped because wah, wah, the strings wah. are basically just nylon fishing line. I mean, that's what guitar strings are for mo- uh, every guitar. Uh, all, that's nah, not, you know, all the lower strings, strings are at least like brass wrapped or whatever. Every guitar yeah, I've ever yeah, had, I mean, only only a couple strings were people, just nylon. Right, but the point is, is that like you know, all the cheap guitars of the world have plastic nylon strings right it's the the fancy electric guitars that have but anyway strings, right? the, the more these strings models. were not just cheap nylon they were like literally just fishing line <laughs> so i bought okay. some real guitar strings and i'm gonna restring it but i'm gonna have to be delicate with it i might have to actually reinforce it a little bit because a real string could put are the guitar strings the same like notes as what i mean it wouldn't matter is, because they're or you, with you're the frequencies like the way this thing would work I just need a string that I could tune to a D vibration and I'm good to go. I could probably tune it to something okay. else. I was going to say, you might want to like, you know, you, it might be better to look for piano strings, right? That are uh, the right. What do you think's in a piano? You have piano more is a piano wire. All right. But I'm saying you get the, the right you oh, yeah. more I mean, choices. Yes. That is the kind of thing I did. So I got some strings that I could tune to D. The thing I'm curious about is if I can do this without snapping the hurdy-gurdy. Because if any of you don't play string instruments, not that I play string instruments, I was told at a young age that I should never play a string instrument because I was terrible at it, preternaturally so. <laughs> but the, like a violin, look at a violin. If you string it, there's like 30 or 40 pounds of force trying to snap the violin in two right at the middle because that's the strings are tight. Right, but if... Right, but almost always it's the strings that break. Oh, no, no, I'm saying the violin would just right? collapse if you struck, if you like too, tightened everything too tight. Yes, but that hardly ever yes. happens. Yes, however. Usually the strings will break. Right? Uh, or the bridge will break. Anyway, this thing, because it uh, is yeah, not sure. like a crafted instrument, but a woodcraft that I pieced together like a big jigsaw puzzle, I'm not confident that it could actually hold the tension of two real strings fully tensioned. Why not buy some cheapo nylon guitar strings instead Even of the n- good nylon ones? nylon guitar strings to tension them to the point where this would sound good as opposed to just as good as I expected it to sound based on the kit? I don't know. So I'm actually I'm going to play with it and see what I can do. I'm going to experiment with this thing. Why not go and buy a fucking fishing line? Because that's, that's what it came with. Uh, I could do that, but it will never sound better than it sounded when I first made it. Why not? You could buy some cheap... You could, you could buy, right... Um, I don't know if ukulele Ooh, strings are a good idea, lay but lay. right, you could buy. You know, there's those like um souvenir, cheapo like children guitar that like you basically that just it's that fishing line and you throw them. it out. Right, that's like yeah. You know well, the other so the other thing I might do is 
like the ones that are like party favorite yep. guitars. Like you'll hand them out at like a party, or like a bar mitzvah or some shit, and like they have a couple strings. You go jing jing. So ding, the good news is, I did an experiment. It's like it's like a plastic thing. This thing only needs two strings. It's a simple hurdy gurdy. There's a drone string and there's a melody string. Oh. So I put oh, okay. just one. I replaced the drone string with like a G, like a metal, like a full on guitar string, and I tensioned it to the point where it would play a sound that was like the note I wanted. And it seemed that the structural integrity was totally fine with that. So I just have to try to figure out if it can take about mm-hmm. double that amount of tension. I might just have to reinforce right. the bridge. I mean, you have, you, but you, you could always, you know, like uh, a lot of people make, you know, that are sound actually pretty good. Like, uh, you know, some yeah. box guitars with like, you know, so you could just get like, you know, rubber band yeah. or something so, or <laughs> what i might just Would do it? if i really want to play this i mean the right answer is just to buy or make a real hurdy-gurdy instead of one that is basically a giant jigsaw puzzle uh sure so we'll see or stop me or just give up on this and stop making no, 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 because the magic of a hurdy-gurdy game. is that it does not require the skills that i'm preternaturally bad at which is fingering on frets i just can't fucking do like that's just like i have a weird blind spot where I cannot play stringed instruments to any capacity. And also I'm not good with a bow. So with my powers combined, like it's a perfect storm of a violin sounding worse as bad as possible. But with a hurdy gurdy, why don't you, if you want to make a, if your goal is to make annoying noises, why don't you just buy one of those like automatones? Oh, wait, wait wait till we get to my thing of the day. (laughs) Okay. As as another automaton. Do you remember the 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 singamajig? You you remember that thing? The thing you're obsessed the with. The thing a jig. It was a toy. Yeah, the thing you're obsessed with, right? That what? guy. No. No, oh, I thought that was the no. Name it was of a toy from machi- like a long time thing. ago. Oh, okay. I just googled it. And I've okay, never good. Seen That's it before. my thing of the day. But uh, remember, is it? An, but it looks like an automaton inside. Sort of, a yeah. But animal. it predates the automaton by by a wide margin. But yeah, basically, right. if I want to be a true annoyatron, I have my trumpet. That is louder than any stringed instrument could ever possibly be. Anoyatron is a character in Hearthstone slash World ah. of Warcraft. <laughs> All right. It's Wednesday. You guys want to hear about anime and comics. You don't want to hear about my hurdy-gurdy. So there is actually a lot of <laughs> anime news, even though a lot of it follows a theme that you're going to see momentarily. So what do you got? Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wanted to first you know, make people aware that certain... T- uh, I think we might have said this on recent Wednesday episodes, but it, it bears repeating that certain t- animes that were recently the ones that we talked about on the show because they were the kind that are in the movie theater in the U.S., when you can still yep. go to the movie theater, uh, are now available streaming in various forms. So I know that you can see Promare streaming somewhere. You might have yep, to pay it's money worth for it. it. I, know that, I know that Lou Over the Wall is on Netflix um song of the sea i think is streaming somewhere right uh yeah so go back and look at all past geek nights wednesdays and i think the vast majority of the anime that we discussed there movie wise are should mostly all now be available streaming somewhere or uh you know pay a few dollars like four dollars on amazon to watch it or honestly yarr. though the pay four ish dollars because to watch it on amazon option it worked like if you've never used that option, it works. I, I've, real been, I've, well. been op- I've been opening myself up to that option more and more because like you want to watch Parasite, it, right? Like, it's like I'm oh, pretty sure you can do that. Oh yeah, yeah, you can absolutely. Um, but it's like think about it. What, what's Netflix a month? Twenty yep. bucks, something like that. Fifteen. Oh, yeah, when I was I don't a kid anymore, to rent a right? movie, I would go to Blockbuster and it cost four dollars to rent a VHS tape. But that was for sure, nineteen not- like ninety one dollars. That was a lot of money. Right. So, so let's think about, you know, let's say you pay one of those like annual subscriptions for like a niche streaming site. Like uh, I think the Criterion channel is like a hundred something dollars a year is their mm. cheapest price. Right. So a hundred something dollars a year divided by 12 is, you know, like eight something bucks a month, maybe. Right. Seven, eight, somewhere in there, I guess. I don't know. Math. Uh, the point is, let's see, 100, I don't want to be wrong and stupid. 8.3. I was yeah. okay. $8, $8 a month. Uh, the point is, okay. So if you watch two movies a month, you're paying like $4 a movie, right? So if you're watching movies every day, you're going to watch every movie on that whole freaking channel. It's I mean, remember big, back when we lived right? in Deacon that- and weren't doing a podcast yet, we got like 
Yeah, then we, we watched got like five right. Netflix DVDs so a week streaming... and we watched them all. Right. So, so with the streaming services, if you're watching several times a week, or if you're one of those people, you know, binge watching the TV shows, then yeah. you're getting your money's worth, right? If you're like me, where all you really watch is like a few, like the excellent movies, right? And you don't even watch the man movies, and you don't watch the TV shows too much, right? It's like Netflix is, I'm watching the Castlevanias, the Dragon Prince, that sort of thing. So it's because it's kind of worth yep. it, right? But, you know, the good, the A-plus movies are not really on most of these services, right? It's like, you know, you want to even watch fucking, I guess, you know, Disney has all Star Warses, but those yep. are the Star Wars. Well, yeah, you you know, I'll put it this way. <laughs> Every time, 100% of the times in recent memory, I've typed the name of a movie into like Netflix because I thought, oh, I'd like to watch that movie. They have not had it. It's almost never there. Almost, right? So it, often these days when I search for a movie I want to watch legally yeah. for some reason, right? It almost always pops up and says, you can watch this on YouTube, Amazon Prime, right? You can watch it in like these four different places that all, and they all cost, a, a, you know, like iTunes. Like four-ish dollars. Um, right, three, three to four dollars to watch it once, right? Actually, Lord of the Rings Trilogy Extended Edition, I own digitally yeah. on amazon oh i yeah buying like right. promare right now actually you can't stream promare you can't rent it on amazon but you can buy it for 20 bucks i mean you are you gonna do buy no, you can buy the right? digital access forever that's what i'm saying is like why would yeah, you exactly. buy exactly because i don't think amazon will disappear and if amazon disappears and i lose whatever movies i have bought over the years then i'll just pirate right them. the point is even though you're buying it that's still streaming you're True. not downloading it but I can watch it an right, infinite so, number of times at very high quality. Yes. The movies that you're thinking that you should be watching are now available to watch legally online. Oh, like if here, you want The Night is Short, right, Walk on movie. Girl. Rent it three dollars three ninety nine from Amazon. You can just watch it. That movie's beautiful. Maybe I, I would. I would watch I that I movie will. again. Right. That movie is so good. I watch it. It's good. All right. So uh, that's news one. News two. Uh, speaking of movies, right? The movie you want to watch is. You know, Miyazaki, the man who has retired 20 times, <laughs> come out of retirement 21 times. Uh, Michael Jordan is jealous <laughs> of how many times <laughs> Miyazaki has come out of retirement uh, to, to animate again. We, It's been a while since he's come out for his not, I don't believe, final time. <laughs> um, uh, the point is... You're talking about the, the 36 he, minutes of that film. Right. He, the film that he is working on, which is called Kimitachi wa do Ikiru ka. How do you which live? Means, how do you How do you live? Which is supposed to be amazing. Who knows? It's a film Miyazaki's making, right? Uh, despite the coronavirus delaying or or severely hindering the production of many other cinematic works, this movie uh, they've managed to animate by hand. 36 minutes. There is no computer involved. They're animating it by hand, the old-fashioned way, because. He's got yeah. nothing better to do. He doesn't care how much money it costs. He's he's he wants to die making the movie most yep. likely, right? That's that's the, <laughs> that's the that's what it looks like. I feel, he says they say the movie is you a know. big fantastical story. I don't know anything about it other than that. Who knows anything about it except him, right? But the point is, it's it. He looks like a captain who wants to go down with the ship. So he keeps going out. God, I just keep one, thinking that one right? episode of Horatio where the captain's like, run up to that fort and attack it so that I may die. Right, like Antoine de saint Perry, who went, uh, you know, out in his plane yep. in the in a horrible situation, right? For because clearly he was asking for it, right? Or a scene from um, a scene involving a character in BoJack Horseman that I will not say any more on because that would be a spoiler. Okay, uh, but anyway, yeah, they're still making it. They've animated thirty six yeah. minutes, so at this rate, if he lives for a few more years, it will. But come this out. article uh, with that promise also comes a threat. Yes. Uh, well. So his son, his son Goro, with four Goro arms, good movie. The, fo the four-armed animator is making a completely computer-generated anime because his dad's not using the computers. So he's like, "All right, I'll use all the computers while you're not using them. They're just sitting there, not working. Yeah, not come doing on, anything. that's how you get that ghost in the shell." <laughs> right. So Goro is making. An animated film that is an adaptation of a book from England about a very wise girl. Somebody, I'm sure, knows what book that is. Yep. I don't. Um, I can. I think. I feel like you can yeah, narrow it down to a couple. That's going to be a CG animated film that will probably come out well before How Do You Live yep. comes out. So we'll see. 
and it's probably it has a higher chance of being finished also because computers and young person and trying to actually make money and not trying to die while working yep, on though, an anime. While some films like that are continuing to make progress, other films are just being delayed. Like there is a general broad slowdown in anime production for all the reasons you can imagine. So for example, uh, the 23rd Pokemon film has now been delayed due to COVID and the studio can't work on it effectively. So they've delayed it. Mm -hmm. I did. I think we also mentioned probably last Wednesday episode that Cartoon Saloon working on Wolf Walkers also has an excellent work at home mm -hmm. situation and they are progressing just fine. And we also talked about how that's going to be supposedly maybe only on Apple Plus. Which what means I will plus, literally like DM Tom Moore cash and then pirate it because we'll see. We'll see. I'm happens. not using that Apple platform. I'm not paying for that. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe go to someone's house who has an Apple TV. Watch I'm telling it. you, just DM, like, DM him like a link to it. Like, send him some cash. It'll work. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Here's 20 bucks. But uh, what I'm surprised about there is that I knew there were a lot of Pokemon movies, but I don't think about them. We've reviewed like two of them on Geek Nights ever. Uh, I didn't realize it was the 23rd Pokemon movie that is being delayed. Oh, yeah, no, all those franchises that don't die just keep having movies. One Piece movies. Why can't I have 23 movies. Ghost in the Shell standalone complex movies? Because they're a lot harder to make and they yep, make less money. exactly. Instead, we get... They cost more money Instead, we to get uh, Ghost in the Shell go, uh, goes to work. <laughs> but... It is pl the thing is, there are... So Plenty of movies for things like Monica. Monica's like a yeah, but they didn't. They movies, didn't need right? a you know? the show. Monica ended perfectly. No, <laughs> any more like Cowboy Bebop. You could say the Cowboy same Bebop thing. didn't even need you a could movie. Say the same thing it about Pokemon. It was okay that they made one movie, but they did not need to make more movies. Anyway, anyway, the real delay news that's a big deal is that for the first time in forty-five years, Sazai San is airing reruns because mm -hmm. they can't keep producing the show. So people don't know about Sazai San. Sazai San is sort of—it's not the content isn't. It's very not the Simpsons, Simpsons of Japan, like people like to say, except in the sense that it is a very long-running animated series about a family it, that is broadly popular. It is extremely long-running. Yes, it is a very popular, very long-running animated series in Japan that doesn't look like anime that people outside Japan don't care about. And you might already take right? issue, but, but Simpsons isn't popular anymore. If it wasn't popular, they wouldn't still be making it. It's more popular than you think. Right. Right. And also, Sazai-san, I, I, from my the feeling I get is that it's about as popular in Japan as Simpsons yeah. is in the U.S., right? Everyone Relative at least speaking, knows right? about it. Um, and they've just, you know, yeah, it's like people, anyone in Japan, if you showed them characters from Sazai-san, you'd say, what is this? They go, yep. Sazai-san. They but what's exactly fascinating what is, is they can name all the characters. Why? This is why I list these three things. The Pokemon movie is probably de well. I think didn't some of the voice actors pass away because they were uh, so old? I think their age is thing. actually part of the problem. But the specifics are well. Contrast these three. So Goro can probably move on with the CG stuff because that's easy to do work from home. And Ghibli has infinite resources to make this situation work, so they're still animating. Pokemon movie needs like a big like there's a lot of contributors to that kind of like crank it out uh, movie for a franchise so it's probably easier to just delay mm -hmm. it than try to keep that team going but Sazai San sure. I'm just going to quote this article because it says it pretty eloquently recording new episodes seems especially difficult for the program many of the actors are older and might not have the necessary equipment or environment at home to voice the show it's the voice acting primarily. The voice actor, like you can't just change the voice of one of these iconic characters. Right, they voice act that, as far as I'm aware, they voice act that show with everyone in the same room and they've been doing I've it I've heard that, that but I never confirmed that, but it, I do believe it's true. Uh, right, and they've been doing it so long that much like The Simpsons, the voice actors are very old now, right? It's like they, when they started doing it, they were young and they just, they've had that same job for a super long time, right? It's like, Find a picture of the lady who's like the voice of Bart now. How oh, old is she? and I, I got to point something out. years older than I gotta when she started. I got to point something out to you kids. Uh, this is the first time in 45 years Sazai San has run, re run reruns, but Sazai San is older than 45 years. You realize the first time they ran reruns was during the oil crisis in 1973. The show had already been running for a long time before that. Yeah, you can't even begin to, like, it's like other things you might try to like w watch all of. Like you could watch all of The Simpsons, you can't even begin to try to watch. Yep, all it of started in even if you were even if you were fluent in Japanese and had it all on a hard drive, you couldn't 
It's like, like Sound Design started airing in 1969 and has not stopped. <laughs> nope. I, but yeah, and think of, even The Simpsons is a fairly difficult challenge. The Simpsons has been airing continuously for all for pretty much as long as I've been alive because I watched it continuously up until it got bad and I stopped in season 12. The Simpsons started when I was in like yep. fourth or I even grade. saw the Tracy Ullman show stuff before The Simpsons came out. That's why I said fourth or fifth. I think the actual yeah. show was fifth grade. So I mean, anyway, I think. Uh, that's all. So the anime industry is going to have trouble just like every other industry is. But thankfully, so many things were far enough along in the pipeline to where there is still a lot of new and newish content that we're going to get. And also, honestly, if you're running out of stuff to watch, there's a lot of great anime just like randomly on Crunchyroll that you might have never thought to watch. Like now's the time to go into the backlog. Oh, I just remembered one more news that I didn't send oh. Rim a link for, oh. but I did post in our forum, so you should come to our forum and you would have gotten. Because I got a bunch earlier. more news I can crank out. Uh, okay, All no, right. just a short one. So uh, Jeff Lemire, favorite comic writer of Geek Nights, uh, had did a while ago when Vertigo Comics was still a thing. Did a series called Oh yeah, called Sweet I only Tooth read the beginning I of that. I never of. read it anymore. Yeah, I have all the volumes. Oh. I didn't finish it, but I will. Uh, I enjoyed every page that I did read of it. It gave me that Jeff Lemire um, feeling. And yeah, so that series is being made for Netflix, supposedly. We'll see how far along that gets. But it looks like, you know, I think someone else had like paid to do it and then ended up not doing it. And now Netflix is, is paying somebody to produce. I think it's going to be live action, uh, not animated. Ah, that could work, still though. Based on, it's still based still based on a comic book right so um that's gonna be pretty interesting and i think it might get people to uh read the book yep dc comics sweet tooth is set to be adapted netflix by robert downey jr's production company yep there you go so that's gonna be fascinating give me the descender descender i would that would make (laughs) that would make me watch a tv show is if you made i've already read the whole thing oh i have not but I do know that the thing oh. I know that I, I know will just keep coming up, the Chekhov's Driller, because Driller is a goddamn killer. Driller is a real killer. <laughs> real killer. Let me tell you. You don't Speaking even know. Speaking of killers, <laughs> uh, Scott talked about this. So I'm not going to belabor the point, but I'm catching up on Castlevania. I just watched all of season two. Uh, all I will say is that I did not expect certain things to be resolved so quickly and relatively easily. <laughs> I hmm. Season two is a lot like season, uh, season two is a lot like st- extravagant, right? Dracula's castle, yep. Dracula, like that, big bad uh, guys, that, like, right? Season two, you said this, but I just have to reiterate season two escalates rapidly. And when a character is like, I'm going to do the thing. And the thing is something ridiculous and crazy. You might think, okay, that's the arc. And then they do it in the next scene. Season two is definitely made. You could tell when they were making it, like this could be the yep. last season, right? So they had to. It could have been the last ending, season, but still leave something. Yeah, and still leave an opening for a third. So the third season it was definitely feels like it was made knowing there was going to be a fourth season. It's a, yeah. just a bridge, right? The third season is all the characters left over from the second season are all separated, and you're skipping and looking. You're, you're the camera's switching between the different groups of characters. Which seeing it's what an old trope, to. but I As love the get, hell out of that trope. But they do not converge in a snatch moment. The it, the season three ends, and the snatch moment is clearly early yep. in season four, if not the very beginning. Of and based on four. now that I know so. more about the threads of like all those different bits, I'm real excited for season three, which I'm going to watch pretty quick. Yeah. 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 All right. So I guess now it's time for things of the day. So speaking of annoyatrons, uh, there was an old toy called a sing a majig. I got to look up exactly when this thing came out. It was like, early 2000s or maybe early 2010s. Like, it's this old just like... Yeah, I mean, the name definitely sounds like the name of an old toy, and but I've never heard of it before, and I didn't have any memory of it whatsoever, and I l- searched for it, and I'm so like, So the okay, story is, is that supposedly, okay. like, they basically it's a little doll, and you're like, you, every time you squeeze the doll, it'll sing, like, one more word in a song that's programmed into it, and that's it. That's what it does. It's like happy. So it's not Teddy Ruxpin with a cassette player. Do you? In his ass. It's you can like control the rate that it sings, and its mouth will move. And like that's pretty much it. But 
there was a promotional special limited edition one that was made to sing the all-star song and the little sigma jig is wearing the suspenders and the black shirt and the tie and it's okay. really hard to find so hank green see so you went on eBay no, and I, I, one, so, or you made so one? Hank Green like told John Green up that this thing existed, and then John Green like went in his mission to find one of them, and he got one. And there's a video of him playing it, and then him explaining the deal with it. And that's my thing of the day. You're an all star. Okay. And the video ends with someone else got a bunch of thing a sing of jigs, reprogrammed them, and then made them sing an all star chorus with all the parts. All right, so uh, this is a thing of the day that would be best for Monday or Tuesday, but you know what? You're getting it on Wednesday. Deal with it, right? So here's a YouTube channel called Some Computer Guy that only has 309 It's got 310 as of um, Dateline now, and guess what? 311. Whoa. <laughs> uh, and basically, this guy, he, you know, a lot of people know about old computers with vacuum tubes or paper tape or punch cards, right? But few people have actually seen those or know how yep. to operate them, right? I don't know how to operate one. I would need to read a manual. I learned and get help in RIT, someone, right? even though I know the principle behind the, the 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 mechanism of computation that it uses, right? I don't know the physical interface and how to use. There the was machine. an Altair right. emulator that was like in a web browser that I remember we found when we were at RIT. But that's at least oh Altair, right? Yeah, that's but I did learn it enough. Like I made it do a thing, and then I was bored with that and done with it. Yeah, this would actually be quite similar to an Altair with the row of yep. switches on the front, only this is a like a not a, Altair was a home PC, right? So you could think of like an Altair being basically like one of these for the home. Yep. Sort of, right? Anyway, uh, so this computer he's got is a cell an SEL eight ten A. Uh, it was used for a lot of things back in the sixties. Uh, this particular one he's got was used for managing the pressure of like a gas pipeline somewhere. Uh, and it was in operation between 1969 and 2000. Okay, so this computer started operation the same year that Sazaisan started airing. <laughs> sure, yes. Um, but yeah, so he's got this computer. He knows how to fix it. He did fix it. Whoa. Right? Uh, and in this video, he shows you it working. Uh, he fast forwards the slow parts where he has to punch in the binary to load. Because right? first he has to... It, it's. Like when you turn your computer on, you have like a BIOS or UFI, and then you have a master boot record, right? So the computer turns on and it can sort of start yep. itself. Computers right? didn't used to do this that. This computer, you turn on, right? This computer turns on and it's nothing. So the first thing you need to do is input a program by hand to tell it how yep. to load I had to, things. I had to do that. Right? The loading program. I did program. that a handful of times at IBM on... It has absolutely no memory whatsoever when it's been off. So you turn it on, you put you in you input the loading program on the switches, then you can load programs. Yep. Right? That will well, then do you the get, IPL, right? then the you can initial program load. That is initializing the computer right. with anything. So right, exactly. So he shows you him doing all that and he's got on tape, right? First he loads in the basic uh yep. compiler, right? <laughs> Cuz it doesn't have that. And then he loads in um, he has to patch it because he's got a diff it's written for a slightly different computer. So he has to manually edit it after it's loaded into the memory. Uh, and then he loads in Lunar Lander off of paper tape, and then he plays Lunar Lander on the terminal, which is, this is amazing. pretty awesome. Yeah, it's great. In the better moment, uh, we're stuck at home. We're doing the show remotely. We're doing live streams on YouTube. You can watch them. There's some people watching this one right now. The pipeline seems fine. Uh, people keep making this point and I watched a bunch of like professional, like video game people and like sports people, all the people who are professionals, like who do this kind of thing for a living, who are stuck at home and are trying to make content at home and across the board, they all have like the worst possible quality and also often aren't that entertaining. Like I feel like without their writers and their technology, they have a lot of trouble. <laughs> But it's all just like blown out mics and nonsense. So I can at least say that even if our content is not as great as some of those people you love, we will at least have a high production quality. Right, well, could you imagine being a pro video guy, right? And normally your job is to make all the video and you're behind the camera and there's professional, there's like actors or famous people in yep. front of the camera and they just show up and do their thing. You put microphones yep. on them, right? With your hands, right? You go up in their coat and stuff. 
right? Um, and now that person's at home. You mail them a bunch of stuff, and you have to get them to do yep. it on their own without yep. fucking up. Uh, and you're like, they all they do is see your face and hear your voice, and you have to explain to them what to press, what to do. A while ago, right? a, a, the it's other like, day, I was watching. We were watching or listening to and watching this live stream that some people were doing a sports thing, and one of them, their mic was clipping like so bad it was crazy and there's the comments in their stream was just a sea of dude fix your mic here are links to what clipping is please 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 fix your mic but the guy was getting increasingly salty and mad that his fans were yelling at him for his clipping mic so he was clipping even more and it was just like this weird feedback loop yeah. i think that the real difference well like you said if if we had a production company I would probably never fuck around with cameras again in my life. I would just let someone else do that, and I'd probably start forgetting how to do things. I do have a friend who's, uh, well, an acquaintance who's very camera-y, uh, and I've thought about getting them to come over. I actually, was consi- they posted, like, hey, I'm looking for freelance videoing work, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll have them come over to do, like, one fancy project or something. The sad part is the right? thing I would want really... people to do the most... And now I can't have anyone come over. The thing I over. want people to do the most would be follow us around a PAX and like record a lot of the games we play so we can then have the footage. Yeah. This friend, this friend would do that, that we for could enough do. money. But part uh, of that is when we're doing our panel, I'd like them to actually operate the camera, but the union in four of the five PAXs we would go to would not yeah. let someone touch our camera while we're on stage because yeah, we would yeah, have sure. to pay That's... the convention center to put their camera person on our camera. Right. Right. No, but this friend would, for example, uh, you know, come over, help me set up yeah. the lighting, right? Give me give me advice because they're better video than me, right? Uh, operate the several cameras to record yep. me from angles, then edit the video, right? And all that, you know, put the graphics on yep. it and stuff. So that would be worth that would be well worth paying for. Uh, but that's uh, that's that plan yep. is dead. Even for a when while. things start to open up, most likely you might see me and Scott doing content together in one of our apartments again. But we're not going to be inviting third parties into that mix anytime soon unknown third yeah. parties right it's like i know rim hasn't left his house and he knows i haven't yep. left my house right so we can we can sort of trust right that we're you know at equal yep. risk here right so uh, otherwise you know the anyway. book club book is still the tale of hanzo we'll get to it when we get to it <laughs> hanzo. i'm playing a lot of overwatch <laughs> the sword maker <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's not the sword maker hanzo and it's genji the, uh, <laughs> The, the, the sex <laughs> so yeah follow us in all the places especially our forum hang out in there hang out in our discord there's stuff going on and we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about in a long time a web comic so it's sort of a web comic if you don't know there's a there's a a, a company called naver n-a-v-e-r it's spelled like navel only you, like your belly button navel only you replace the r with an l uh and this naver is basically google in yep Korea, South Korea, right? It's like they are everything in South Korea. You know, like it's it's shocking how much of the South Korean internet is 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 neighbor. It's the same amount of the internet in the U.S. that's Google and yep. Amazon, a lot, right? Um, like there'll be websites you go to, and it's like, oh, that's it doesn't even look like it's a neighbor site. It's like, oh, yep, yeah, neighbor runs that. Yep, okay. So one of the websites they run that is actually a uh, a worldwide website is this Webtoons site. So web comics are actually kind of big in South Korea, bigger than they are in the United States, at least relative to the country, right? So, for example, uh, you know what's a big web comic in in the Mega U.S. Tokyo, right? Like, no, I mean, like yeah. you know, Penny Arcade is big. Right? Order of the you Stick know? is bigger but, than it looks. Yeah, exactly, right. But a big web comic in Korea would have the prominence that a big newspaper comic would have in the mm. U.S. in the 90s. So, like, I have seen on Korean television web comic artists on television, right, where normally you would see in the U.S. Well, like, look, Penny like, Arcade. You know, a, G- a Jim Davis. Yeah, but, like, Penny Garfield, Arcade might right? be one of the most, like, lucrative web comics in American history. Right, but it has no prominence on television mainstream. Yeah, Leno, Leno wasn't going to interview Mike and on- Jerry. Gabe and Tycho aren't on, yeah, right, like an NBC talk show. They're not even Good Morning America yeah, the level, press at New right? York Comic Con wouldn't even mention they were there. Right, exactly. So they made their own um, Comic Con anyway. So, right, but webcomics have that level of popularity there. Uh, 
you know, a lot of people read them on their phones, I think. So Webtoons is a site, Naver Webtoons. It's actually an international site. You don't have to read any Korean whatsoever. Uh, and you can make an account or not. Making an account helps you sort of save your spot, right? Which is real important. That's yeah. why I stopped reading a lot of web comics because uh, I forget where I was. Then I forget to go to the site because I didn't bookmark it and then I'm done. Right. There's nice apps for it on your phone uh, or your tablet or whatever. Uh, you can publish your own comics on the site. Uh, I th- and I think that, you know, I don't know all the details of it, but there are lots of extremely high quality color comics yeah. on here that are like meant the, the format of a lot of them is basically long Which, page. That's part right? of why I, I think it's interesting to talk about this because a lot of web comics tended to, especially in the early days, have either the four panel format or they'd be formatted in a way that could then be put in a book later. These comics right. very much like it feels right to read them on a screen. At- it is. These were designed to be read on your phone. It's a long thing. So you, you go to say, here, I'll pick yep. a random one. I picked one a random one. I'm scrolling bleak- down in the stream too. Here. In the bleak midwinter, right? It looks like angsty dude in snow with some sci-fi and yep. whatever, right? And you click, and first of all, it's separated into episodes, which are separated into seasons, right? So, and each episode is one page, one vertically long page, and you just scroll down and down and down as you read the page, and that's the episode. And then several of those will make up a season, and the creator will, you know, release like page, 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 well, episode, episode, episode on a regular schedule until the season is over. And then there'll be a break while they work on, while this next season is getting ready. Right. Uh, and that's the format of pretty much all of these. The creators are getting money for these. Uh, the, right? I think, I don't know if it's based on popularity or if they're being contracted or whatever, but I think it's actually a good deal based on what I've heard. The artists who are working and making webtoons yep. seem to be happy with it. I haven't seen them complaining and saying it's no good. And there's a lot of readers, right? Some of these comics, it's like the one I just mentioned randomly, it has 334,000 yep. hearts, right? There is one called True Beauty, some romance one, 20.1 million hearts, right? My Giant Nerd Boyfriend, 31.8 million hearts. So there's millions of people using this app, uh, if you're not aware of it, to read comics yep. in this And think format. about this because web comics. Uh, they're like they're their own thing, and especially as paper media is in decline, where do people want to read stuff? There's no good way to read traditional comics on technology yet. Like all the readers that exist, even tablets, they're just not a great experience in many cases. But that's why I buy yep, the paper. But ones this format, most of if the you time. design it for the format that most people will access it in, it just works and it's great. I think a lot of people don't even think about that. And also the quali- the quality is extremely high art wise mm. right it's like you scroll down the page with like list of comics and every single thumbnail looks like it was made by like one of the best artists in the artist alley there's the got to be a bad comic right? in there somewhere it, but that one might be meh but nah. it might be funny though <laughs> anyway and there's all the the comics are extremely diverse covering so many genres and you know styles and types of characters and mm-hmm. all sorts of crazy stuff anyway uh, today we want to talk about just one of these, right? Even though there's so many of them done by someone we've been a fan of for a long time. Katie Cook. If you don't know, Katie Cook is someone who's been in the U S comics convention art scene for a long time. Katie Cook did a lot of the early, uh, official licensed My Little yep. Pony I think comics, she's a big French part of why magic, that comic right? was so good early on. Like she set a tone. She did cover art for it yeah, and Katie Cook, writing. Yep. Katie Cook has done, uh, uh, when you go to conventions, she'll do this thing where she makes a tiny watercolor on mm-hmm. these little cards that are very cute. She, for a long time, uh, if you went to the store, it's about like collectible card series. Like, let's say you were buying Indiana Jones trading cards, right? Because uh, those were <laughs> a thing. <laughs> um, you know, you buy them and there's collectible cards that don't do anything. They're not like baseball cards. They're just like pictures from the movies yep. or whoever, right? And then randomly, if you were super lucky, what they were doing to promote the, these trading card sets was they would randomly insert cards into the packs that had hand-drawn art. Like the artist drew on that card. They gave the artist a blank white card that they painted or drew on, and then they sent those back to the company, and they shuffled them in with all the manufactured printed cards. And if you're lucky, you would get one of those. Katie Cook did a lot yes. of those um, in various trading card sets. 
She's done some books, uh, a lot of Star Wars licensed art. I think she did books like ABC 3PO, like a yep. little children's. Gronk is Star what a lot Wars of people book, I think would know right? Katie's work from. Yeah, Gronk was her webcomic that she did on her own, right? Uh, just like on, I think on her own website. I don't even think it was with another website at all. Uh, but anyway, the thing we're talking about today is her webtoon, right? Which is called Nothing Special. Its third season just started. So there are two seasons yep. to read. Uh, just like all these other webtoons, each page is really long. The two seasons have like 30 something ish chapters, I yep. guess, each. So you can read it all pretty quickly. I read it all in like a yep. few and days. And I think one main thing I know. like about it is that all web comics, especially like when they start, have to do their sort of like establishing origin. Like, who are these characters? Why do you care about them? But a lot of them sort of like a lot of amateur ones tend to fail in that they'll spend so long doing that that everyone loses interest or. Like, they never get to the part they wanted to get to, and then their career changes or anything. This right. moves... Well, right, or the Naruto can happen where that establishing part is good yeah. and or bad, or right? Or, and then when they switch, they sort of switch modes to the actual story, and you don't like one or the other. So if you don't like the first part, you don't get to the story. And if you don't like the story, you fall off once yep. you're done with the beginning part, which is Naruto, right? Naruto is like, funny ninja school, yes, Tournaments. Yep. Oh, I'm done. Yu Yu Hakusho, I even was right? tricked for a few episodes. Exactly. Yu Yu show before they start having tournaments, is an amazing <laughs> A-plus shonen show. Uh, and after that, it's just like, okay, yep. fighting, whatever. But this one, but nothing anyway. special, moves pretty quick. It's something it, it's special. Good. It moves quick past that establishing <laughs> thing and gets right to its sort of kickoff plot. And it's very consistent in quality. Like, it just moves at a good, steady pace. You never get bored with it. That, like, as I read, or as I read, I haven't read season three yet, It uh, secrets are revealed early enough to keep it going and to keep it interesting. Right. It's not like there isn't really, uh, like with a lot of other stories, right, the, the, there's usually, like, a big secret of space. And while they go through the smaller stories right? It's like, no, just get to the big story, right? X-Files, just tell me about the fucking Until he did, man. and then I please, I wish bullshit. I didn't know about the smoking man. That is so dumb. Right, it's, right. it's like, you know, but it's, it's the same feeling you usually yep. get, right? With, with nothing special, it's like the big story isn't really a thing. There's a big setting that has mysteries yep. about it, right? Like, what's the deal with this, right? But there isn't like a big bad guy. There isn't a big threat. Well, like really not to spoil anything, kind. but the deal with her mom, like she lives alone with her dad, the main character. And there's magic afoot. Obviously it's a fantasy thing. There's like the real normal world. And then there's the fantasy world. And there's some reason why multiple magical non-human people just happen to live in the normal world. Like there, there's a whole setting here, but like the mystery is her dad disappears. And then you meet her mom and her mom's deal is just very like, interesting and environmental <laughs> and that but that's take it's like you know you'd think oh when whenever there's like a missing family yep. member that's like a big deal right it's like no they just take care like of that right away pretty, like oh you know and season season one and they take care that's of where it dad fully. went it's like they don't you're right it's like they don't leave it hanging it's like oh here it is yep. solved but also boom the, done the move the on mystery and i'm just avoid i don't want to spoil it because it's short like just read it but the mystery of that, like that bit about her parents and like how she came to be is very straightforward. It's not like a big secret of space. It's just like, Oh, I guess that happened. Like dad met this person and that's what happened. And this isn't like a big epic right. plot. This is just going to resolve itself. Mm -hmm. It's hard so, to talk about it in also, any circumspect way, unfortunately. Right. Uh, right. So also it's like usually in shows when there's like a romance situation, Right. The romance is like very like ooh, are they gonna Miyaka, kiss? Miyaka, Tamahome, right? it doesn't get to that for like forty episodes. Right, nothing special. It's like, all right, you know, there's some romance back and forth thing going on, but then boom, yep, they kissing, right? And then they basically don't stop kissing. They're always kissing, and people are like, that was oh, like the anime on. with right? the uh, the big guy <laughs> and the smaller girl, and they start dating. Exactly. Yes, my, my, my love, love story. story. The fact that they start dating and try to make it work right away is the only reason that show is good. Right. They start dating pretty quickly in this, right? And they keep on dating and, you know, they don't keep it a secret from anybody. They don't, yep. you know. It's, I guess one of the, the like, thing I like about Nothing Special specifically without, like, spoiling anything is kind of that. It just, it skips past what would normally be in, like, a typical more amateur webcomic, a full arc 
Like, they'll spend a year well, telling I the think, story of how they fell in love. Right. Well, I think the number one thing is that you never get that situation where someone's not saying something just yep. because, right? It's like people say stuff to each other and move, and things keep moving along. No one's really stu- – some of the characters are weird because they're in a yep. fantasy world, like the little fairy old Yeah, but I like or... those characters because they're weird, but they're not just like hiding right. the big secret like, oh, I'll tell you when you're older, and then like it's a big mystery. It's like, oh, here's right. the deal. Right. Well, there's the there's the demon guy who doesn't want to talk about his demon family, but it's like he tells you about the demon family. He's like, yeah, yeah. they're bad. <laughs> it's not like he's not like hiding like, oh, no, my family's, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, the deal. Yep. Basically, he's like, oh, shit, that's my brother. He's <laughs> evil. Watch out. <laughs> he's a demon. I'm basically yep. the only good. And I'm demon. not even that Stay good. Other demon brothers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, and other things. Right. It's like, you know, the, when there are mysteries like, oh. He's got the, it's like they, they foreshadow a little bit of mystery or like a little, little Chekhov's guns yep. here and there. Like he's got a pink broken wing, Chekhov's gun. That gun fires in a yep. few pages. Like, and it's like, boom, there it is. It's not like Chekhov's guns hanging on the wall. Chekhov's guns always in someone's yeah. hand, right? When it gets, it's, it gets pulled out, it's in the hand and then and it maybe, fires. There's maybe no... it's because I just watched it, but aspects of that are part of what I liked about Castlevania season two as well. In that it's like, a character learns something and the next scene is that character like either telling everyone who needs to know it or doing a thing based on that information. All right. So we got to talk about everyone's favorite character, the radish radishes. Yep. <laughs> so there's these little, so basically in the, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a fantasy world situation where there's a real world and a fantasy world yep. and they're connected. But unlike Escaflone, it's not like one of those, you know, what do they call it? Uh, you know, transported to another world oh, yeah. situations. I, it's like, it's like the worlds are connected and they can freely move between them. And like she could just go home anytime. They, they don't. Yeah. It's like, it's not a thing, right? It's, it's taken care yep. of. And it also, there's no central it's, mystery of why is this other world? Like it's just part of the world. That's just how the world is. It's just, there are two, there are two worlds, but you need magic to go between them. But her dad is a magic yep. dude. So like, not can. like Escaflone where the like end, right? someone going between the worlds is like an entire arc of a story. Right. Everyone else in the human world doesn't know. Presumably, most of them don't know. There's another world yep. or worlds. And everyone in the magic world doesn't really have a reason to go they to know the real about world. It. Real like, a lot of them world. know about it and just don't care about it. Yeah. It's like, they're just, why would they go to yep. the not magic world? You know, whatever. It's, I guess it's a lot of effort and no reason to do it. I imagine at some point they might do... There's no, there's no foreshadowing for this whatsoever. But I could see... You know, when they need more plots, do the old cliche, bad guys, demons, go to the real human world yep. plot, right? That's always that a happens. good one. Uh, I mean, and it's, Inuyasha had that. There's absolutely no... Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, so there's these radishes, which are like ghosts of dead And the vegetables. main character, for reasons, can see them and communicate with them. Right. So uh, some characters can see them and some can't, but the main character can... And they sort of semi worship the main character. Yep, that's sort of a uh, theme and follow of the her show around. is that ra- people will worship the main character for reasons that aren't entirely explained, and all the all characters in the world sort of assume that everyone knows the deal and talk about it like, oh, of course everyone worships her. Right, and she doesn't know what the deal is because she's grown up in the not magic world and only came to the magic world yep. somewhat recently. It doesn't even know that much magic yet, but she has inborn magic, right? She thinks she's nothing special, but she's, like, yep. super special. And a lot right? of the themes just seem to follow that idea of what does it mean to be special and what is special. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, if you are looking for web comics to read and, you know, most of the web comics you read ended, yep. Dr. McDincha, or you know, are hard to read yep. websites. Or don't uh, update that frequently. Or the, even if the they're... Or, Right, or they're just on Twitter, like Penny Arcade or, you know, whatever, and you read, you know, it's like one strip in, like, it's a little tiny three-panel thing, and you're not getting your long story uh, situation, right? And you don't want to pay for graphic novels on paper or, you know, comicsology because that costs a lot of money. You just want to read something long-form comics for free in English with lots and lots of choices, lots and lots of content, stuff you won't see, you know, published by... Marvel, DC, or even manga publishers, you know, Shonen Jump, whoever, uh, this is the place to go. And you can read these uh, without buying anything. Some... You can read these without going outside. 
Just read them on right? your phone. You can just read them on your tablet, read them on your phone. Uh, totally free. Uh, I highly recommend the site, especially the comic, Nothing Special, which is the one that I have read the most of on this site. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a hey, Webtoons, Naver Webtoons is, is the stuff. All right. There you go. I think that 